Hello everyone, my name is Liu Shuo and I come from Huawei Tech uh, Network Technology Lab. Today I'm going to introduce our TransPod Transparent in Network Aggregation Framework NetReduce. To get started, let's first, think, uh, let's first rethink distributed training approaches from the network point of view. In traditional parameter server architecture, all workers push their training results to a dedicated server for aggregation, thus resulting in the traffic in cast phenomenon. On the contrary, by using all reduce based approaches, the workers only need to communicate with their neighbors, which is bandwidth optimal, and no more incast occurs. However, all reduce introduces multiple RTT interaction between the nodes. When the number of workers increases, the traffic volume in the network is approaching two times of the model size. Recently, a class of in-network aggregation solutions has emerged as a significant area of interest. This approach offloads the gradient's aggregation onto programmable switches, with, which accelerates the network transition, uh, transmission and the freeze network bandwidth. However, in most of the existing solutions, the designers have to re-implement the basic transport layer functions in the application layer. Because they need a customized INS stack to co-design the end host and the switch logic. Therefore, they may not benefit from the technical progress in modern data center networks, such as the tech, uh, RDMA technology. In this work, we present NetReduce, which inherits all the advantages of the LNA and the keep transport layer transparency. Why the INA stack needs transport transparency? First of all, as mentioned before, current INA stack is implemented in software, for instance, by using the DBDK in user space. To compete with hardware-based RMA, it needs more CPU cycles. Second, it causes development complexity in machine learning system building. For example, in ATP, which is published in NSDI 21, about 40, uh, about 41 percent of the coding effort is spent on re reinventing transport layer functions. Third, in a shared cluster, the network has to apply queues rules to isolate INA traffic and other transport traffic. Otherwise, the bandwidth contention between them could lead to unexpected behaviors. Hence, our goal is to design a transport transparent INA primitive, which should achieve first the communication acceleration and the scalability from INA, and second, inherit high throughput and low latency with low CPU overhead by using popular RDMA. To achieve this goal, the first challenge we are facing is about connection preservation. Existing solutions view the gradient aggregation and the result multicast as two separate processes. In each process, the data flow is mutated, thus breaking the classic end-to-end -end principle in the computer network view. But if we put the two processes together, we can splice the data flows to form end to hand connections. For example, in the red figure, we can splice the gradient data flow W0 to the switch with the result flow from switch to W1. Then the whole data flow W0 to W1 would therefore experience man in the middle data manipulation, but keep the volume unchanged. Finally, the two endpoints would not perceive the data mutation and keeping the connection states function correctly. The second challenge is about INA hide recovery. If we cannot access to the NIC, we can only con uh, concatenate our customized INA hider on the gradients on a message granu uh, granularity. 
after the packet uh, packetization, only the first packet would contain the ion hydrogen. Therefore, we need a recovery mechanism in the switch for those non-first packets. Actually, we use a connection lookup table to do so. Every packet will have a sequence number in the transport layer to indicate the ordering. The basic idea is to use this information for linking the non-first packets to those first packets. When our first packet arrives in the switch, it would create a new CLT entry in the following packet. If the following packets uh, match the, three, uh, the same three tuple, including the south IP address, that's the IP address, and that's the Q pair information, plus that the packet sequence number belongs to the range indicated by the first packet, then the packet would obtain its corresponding header information. Now, let's look at the net reduce workflow. During the initialization process, each worker in a ring would set up a one RDMA connection to its successor and also accepts a one RDMA connection from its uh, predecessor. After that, all workers in the job synchronously send gradient tensors in the same order. When the packets arrive in the switch, it would first check a CLT to get INA header information, and then address to the aggregator array. In this aggregator array, a specific slot would be allocated based on the rank information uh, in the header. After the aggregation process, the checksum ensures the uh, packet integrity, and finally, the packet would be sent out. We also propose a parallel or reduce approach using NetReduce. The modern machine learning training clusters uh, are usually equipped, in, equip, equipped with multiple GPUs on each machine. These GPUs can communicate in different patterns. Constructing the communication pattern should take the bandwidth gap between the intra and the inter machines into consideration in order to uh, for better overall throughput. The NetReduce protocol provides the flex a flexibility for a job to build a multiple parallel rings to saturate the bandwidth. For the implementation, at the end host, we employ Rocky V2 as a transport protocol and the implement NetReduce protocol as a new primitive generic operation in NICO, which NICO stands for NVIDIA Collective Communication Library. At the switch side, we use standard commodity 100 gigabytes Ethernet switches, and we prototype an iron accelerator on an FG, uh, FPGA board connected to the switch. From the comparison of net reuse with existing INA solutions line of code, we can see that net reduce uses Less than, less than 1,000 lines of code by leveraging the Rocky V2 protocol, which is far more less than the existing solutions. For the performance on single GPU machines, we have four machines altogether, each with one GPU. We vary different deep learning models, a batch size, and even the precision level. We conclude that the NetReduce has better performance for those communication-intensive models, such as AlexNet and VGG, because the benefits from reducing the network traffic can be hidden behind the cost of computing for those computing-intensive models, such as uh, ResNet. For the performance on multi-GPU machines, we can see that all the solutions have throughput loss due to the bandwidth gap between the net uh, between the intermachine and the, the intramachine. But net reduce shows less degradation as its parallel method, which is a GPU balanced and the INA accelerations uh, complements the loss. Finally, I'm gonna conclude this presentation. 
uh, we propose a transport transparent INA primitive with twofold accelerations for DD jumps. The first one is communication acceleration and the scalability for INA. The second, the high throughput and the low latency with low CPU overhead from hardware based RDMA. And the approach is development and management friendly. There is no need to rebuild the basic transport layer functions or isolate the INA traffic from others. Uh, that's all. Uh, thank you for your attention.